Today is the 20th of November 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. It is cold here. It is really cold here. So I hope you're all keeping nice and warm. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship. If you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. Dead simple. It's really easy. You'll pick it up as we go along. But we always begin each episode with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? Father, we trust in your power to create, to sustain, and to enable. But we couldn't trust it if we didn't know that you were always nearby. So, Father, be with us, Lord, as we listen and pray. Help us not to check our minds or our hearts at the door, but enable us to bring all that we are to you so that we might experience your touch upon all aspects of our lives. We pray this because of, and in the name of your precious Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music to give us some time to center our thoughts on God, and then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we continue with the book of Ezekiel, and we see Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. We'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Father, open our hearts today as we read your word. Speak to us in new ways, in ways unexpected. Remind us that no matter where we are, your words are there in our lives. Father, let us use it both as a shield and also as a sword. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. We begin with Ezekiel 16. The word of the Lord came to me again. Son of man, 
explain Jerusalem's detestable practices to her. You are to say, this is what the Lord God says to Jerusalem. Your origin and your birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, your umbilical cord wasn't cut on the day you were born and you weren't washed clean with water. You were not rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one cared enough about you to even do one of these things out of compassion for you. But you were thrown out into an open field because you were despised on the day you were born. I passed by you and saw you lying in your blood. And I said to you as you lay in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you as you lay in your blood, live. I made you thrive like plants of the field. You grew up and matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, but you were stark naked. Then I passed by you and saw you, and you were indeed at the age for love. So I spread the edge of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I pledged myself to you, entered into a covenant with you, and you became mine. This is the declaration of the Lord. I washed you with water, rinsed off your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you in embroidered cloth and provide you with leather sandals. I also wrapped you in fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with jewelry, putting bracelets on your wrists and a chain around your neck. I put a ring in your nose, earrings in your ears and a beautiful tiara on your head. So you were adorned with gold and silver and your clothing was made of fine linen, silk and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour, honey and oil. You became extremely beautiful and attained royalty. Your fame spread among the nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I bestowed on you. This is the declaration of the Lord. But you were confident in your beauty and acted like a prostitute because of your fame. You lavished your sexual favors on everyone who passed by. Your beauty became his. You took some of your garments and made colorful high places for yourselves and you engaged in prostitution with them. These places should not have been built, and this should never have happened. You also took your beautiful jewelry made of gold and silver I had given you, and you made male images so that you could engage in prostitution with them. Then you took your embroidered garments to cover them, and set my oil and incense before them. You also set before them as a pleasing aroma the food I gave you, the fine flour, oil, and honey that I fed you, This is what happened. This is the declaration of the Lord God. You even took your sons and daughters you bore to me and sacrificed them to these images as food. Wasn't your prostitution enough? You slaughtered my children and gave them up when you passed them through the fire to the images. In all your detestable practices and acts of prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were stark naked and lying in your blood. Then, after all your evil, woe, woe to you, declaration of the Lord God, you built yourself a mound and made yourself an elevated place in every square. You built your elevated place at the head of every street and turned your beauty into a detestable thing. You spread your legs to everyone who passed by and increased your prostitution. You engaged in promiscuous acts with Egyptian men, your well-endowed neighbors and increased your prostitution to provoke me to anger. Therefore I stretched out my hand against you and reduced your provision. I gave you over to the desire of those who hate you, the Philistine women who were embarrassed by your indecent behavior. Then you engaged in prostitution with the Assyrian men because you were not satisfied. Even though you did this for them, you still were not satisfied. So you extended your prostitution to Chaldea, the land of merchants but you were not even satisfied with this. How your heart was inflamed with lust, the declaration of the Lord God, when you did all these things, the acts of of a brazen prostitute, building your mound at the head of every street and making your elevated place in every square. But you were unlike a prostitute because you scorned payment. You adulterous wife who received strangers instead of her husband. Men give gifts to all prostitutes but you gave gifts to all your lovers. You bribed them to come to you from all around for your sexual favors. So you were the opposite of other women in your acts of prostitution. No one solicited you. 
when you paid a fee instead of one being paid to you, you were the opposite. Therefore, you prostitute, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. Because your lust was poured out and your nakedness exposed by your acts of prostitution with your lovers, and because of all your detestable idols and the blood of your children that you gave to them, I am therefore going to gather all those lovers you pleased, all those you loved as well as all those you hated. I will gather them against you from all around and expose your nakedness to them so that they see you completely naked. I will judge you the way adulteresses and those who shed blood are judged. Then I will bring about your bloodshed in wrath and jealousy. I will hand you over to them and they will level your mounds and tear down your elevated places. They will strip you of your clothes, take your beautiful jewelry and leave you stark naked. They will bring a mob against you to stone you and to cut you to pieces with their swords. Then they will burn down your houses and execute judgments against you in the sight of many women. I will stop you from being a prostitute and you will never again pay fees for lovers. So I will satisfy my wrath against you and my jealousy will turn away from you. Then I will be silent and no longer angry. Because you did not remember the days of your youth but enraged me with these things, I will also bring your actions down on your own head. This is the declaration of the Lord. Haven't you committed immoral acts in addition to your detestable practices? Look, everyone who uses the Proverbs will say this daughter about you, like mother, like daughter. You are the daughter of your mother, who despised her husband and children. You are the sister of your sisters, who despised their husbands and children. Your mother was a Hittite, and your father an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria, who lived with her daughters to the north of you. And your younger sister was Sodom, who lived with her daughters to the south of you. Didn't you walk in their ways and do their detestable practices? It was only a short time before you behaved more corruptly than they did. As I live, the declaration of the Lord. Your sister Sodom and her daughters have not behaved as you and your daughters have. Now this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride, plenty of food and comfortable security, but didn't support the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me, so I removed them when I saw this. But Samaria did not commit even half your sins. You have multiplied your detestable practices beyond theirs, and made your sisters appear righteous by all the detestable things that you have committed. You must also bear your disgrace, since you have been an advocate for your sisters. For they appear more righteous than you because of your sins, which you committed more abhorrently than they did. So you also be ashamed and bear your disgrace, since you have made your sisters appear righteous. I will restore their fortunes, the fortunes of Sodom and her daughters, and those of Samaria and her daughters. I will also restore your fortunes upon them. So you will bear your disgrace and be ashamed of all you did when you comforted them. As for your sisters, Sodom and her daughters, and Samaria and her daughters will return to their former state. You and your daughters will also return to your former state. Didn't you treat your sister Sodom as an object of scorn when you were proud, before your wickedness was exposed? In all the times you were scorned by the daughters of Aram, and all those around her, and by the daughters of the Philistines, those who treated you with contempt from every side. You yourself must bear the consequences of your indecency and detestable practices. This is the Lord's declaration. For this is what the Lord God says, I will deal with you according to what you have done, since you have despised the oath by breaking the covenant. But I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways, and be ashamed when you receive your older and younger sisters. I will give them to you as daughters, but not because of your covenant. I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know that I am Yahweh, so that when I make atonement for all you have done, you will remember and be ashamed, and never open your mouth again because of your disgrace. This is the declaration of the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, pose a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel. 
You are to say, this is what the Lord God says. A great eagle with great wings, long pinions and full plumage of many colours, came to Lebanon and took to the top of the cedar. He plucked off its topmost shoot, brought it to the land of merchants, and set it in a city of traders. Then he took some of the land's seed and put it in a fertile field. He set it like a willow, a plant by abundant waters. It sprouted and became a spreading vine, low in height with its branches turned towards him. Yet its roots stayed under it. So it became a vine, produced branches, and sent out shoots. But there was another great eagle, with great wings and thick plumage. And this vine bent its root towards him. It stretched out its branches to him from its planting bed so that he might water it. It had been planted in a good field by abundant waters, in order to produce branches, bear fruit, and become a splendid vine. You are to say, This is what the Lord God says. Will it flourish? Will he not tear out its roots and strip off its fruits so that it shrivels? All its fresh leaves will wither. Great strength and many people will not be needed to pull it up from its root. Even though it is planted, will it flourish? Won't it completely wither when the east wind strikes it? It will wither on the ground when it is sprouted. The word of the Lord came to me. Now say to that rebellious house, Don't you know what these things mean? Tell them, The king of Babylon came to Jerusalem, took its king and officials, and brought them back with him to Babylon. He took one of the royal family and made a covenant with him, putting him under oath. So he took away the leading men of the land, so the kingdom might be humble and not exalt itself, but might keep his covenant in order to endure. However, this king revolted against him by sending his ambassadors to Egypt, so they might give him horses and a large army. Will he flourish? Will the one who does such things escape? Can he break a covenant and still escape? As I live, this is a declaration of the Lord God. He will die in Babylon, in the land of the king who put him on the throne, whose oath he despised and whose covenant he broke. Pharaoh will not help him with his great army and vast horde in battle, when ramps are built and siege walls constructed to destroy many lives. He despised the oath by breaking the covenant. He did all of these things even though he gave his hand in pledge. He will not escape. Therefore this is what the Lord says, As I live I will bring down on his head my oath that he despised and my covenant that he broke. I will spread my net over him and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and execute judgment on him there for the treachery he committed against me. All the fugitives among his troops will fall by the sword and those who survive will be scattered to every nation of the wind. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken. This is what the Lord says. I will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and plant it. I will pluck a tender shoot from its topmost shoot, and I will plant it on a high, towering mountain. I will plant it on Israel's high mountain, so that it may bear branches, produce fruits, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind will nest under it, take sh- taking shelter in the shade of its branches. Then all the trees of the field will know that I am Yahweh. I will bring down the tall tree and make the low tree tall. I cause the green tree to wither and make the withered tree survive. I, Yahweh, have spoken and I will do it. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, this is a declaration of the Lord God. You will no longer use this proverb in Israel. Look, every life belongs to me. The life of the father is like the life of the son. Both belong to me. The person who sins is the one who will die. Now suppose a man is righteous and does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or raise his eyes to the idols of the houses of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or come near a woman during her menstrual impurity. He doesn't depress anyone, but returns his collateral to the debtor. He does not commit robbery, but gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with clothing. He doesn't lend at interest or for profit, but keeps his hand from wrongdoing and carries out true justice between men. He follows my statutes and keeps my ordinances acting faithfully. Such a man is righteous. He will certainly live. This is a declaration of the Lord God. 
Now suppose the man has a violent son who sheds blood and does any of these things, though the father has done none of them. Indeed, when the son eats at the mountain shrines and defiles his neighbor's wife, and when he oppresses the poor and needy, commits robbery and does not return collateral, and when he raises his eyes to the idols, commits detestable acts and lends at interest or for profit, will he live? He will not live for he committed all those detestable acts. He will certainly die. His blood will be on him. Now suppose he has a son who sees all the sins his father has committed, and though he sees them, he does not do likewise. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or raise his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife. He doesn't oppress anyone, hold collateral or commit robbery. He gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with clothing. He keeps his hand from harming the poor, not taking interest or profit on a loan. He practices my ordinances and follows my statutes. Such a person shall not die for his father's iniquity. He will certainly live. As for his father, he will die for his own iniquity because he practiced fraud, robbed his brother, and did what was wrong among his people. But you may ask, why doesn't the son suffer punishment for the father's iniquity? Since the son has done what is just and right, carefully observing my statutes, he will certainly live. The person who sins is the one who will die. A son won't suffer punishment for the father's iniquity, and a father won't suffer punishment for the son's iniquity. The righteousness of the righteous person will be on him, and the wickedness of the wicked person will be on him. Now if the wicked person turns from all the sins he has committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he will certainly live. He will not die. None of the transgressions he has committed will be held against him. He will live because of the righteousness he has practiced. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? This is a declaration of the Lord God. Instead, don't I take pleasure when he turns from his ways and lives. But when a righteous person turns from his righteousness and practices iniquity, committing the same detestable acts that the wicked do, will he live? None of the righteous acts he did will be remembered. He will die because of the treachery he has engaged in and the sin he has committed. But you say, the Lord's way isn't fair. Now listen, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Instead, isn't it your ways that are unfair? When a righteous person turns from his righteousness and practices iniquity, he will die for this. He will die because of the iniquity he has practiced. But if a wicked person turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he will preserve his life. He will certainly live because he thought it over and turned away from the transgressions he had committed. He will not die. But the house of Israel says, The Lord's way isn't fair. Is it my ways that are unfair, house of Israel? Indeed, Isn't it your ways that are unfair? Therefore, house of Israel, I would judge each one of you according to his ways. This is the declaration of the Lord. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, so there would not be a stumbling block that causes your punishment. Throw off the transgressions you have committed, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in anyone's death. This is the declaration of the Lord God. So repent and live. Now lament for the princes of Israel and say, What was your mother, a lioness? She lay down among her lions. She reared her cubs among the young lions. She brought up one of her cubs and he became a young lion. After he learnt to tear prey, he devoured people. When the nations heard about him, he was caught in their their pit. Then they led him away with hooks to the land of Egypt. When she saw that she waited in vain, that her hope was lost, she took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He prowled among the lions, and he became a young lion. After he learned to tear prey, he devoured people. He devastated their strongholds and destroyed their cities. The land and everything in it shuddered at the sound of his roaring. Then the nations from the surrounding provinces set out against him. They spread their nets over him, he was caught in their pit. He put a wooden yoke on him with hooks and led him away to the king of Babylon. They brought him into the fortresses, so his roars could no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your vineyard, planted by the water. It was fruitful and full of branches because of plentiful waters. It had strong branches, 
fit for the scepters of rulers. Its head towered above the clouds, so it was conspicuous for its height as well as its many branches. But it was uprooted in fury, thrown to the ground, and the east wind dried up its fruit. Its strong branches were torn off and dried up, fire consumed them. Now it is planted in the wilderness, in a dry and thirsty land. Fire has gone out from its main branch and has devoured its fruit, so it is no longer has a strong branch, a scepter for ruling. This is a lament, and should be used as a lament. In the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, some of Israel's elders came to consult the Lord, and they sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak with the elders of Israel and tell them, This is what the Lord God says. Are you coming to consult me? As I live, I will not be consulted by you. This is a declaration of the Lord. Will you pass judgment against them? Will you pass judgment, son of man? Explain the detestable practices of their fathers to them. Say to them, This is what the Lord God says. On the day I chose Israel, I swore an oath to the descendants of Jacob's house and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt. I swore to them, saying, I am Yahweh your God. On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land I had searched out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. I also said to them, Each of you must throw away the detestable things that are before your eyes and not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. But they rebelled against me and were unwilling to listen to me. None of them threw away the detestable things that were before their eyes and they did not forsake the idols of Egypt. So I considered pouring out my wrath on them, exhausting my anger against them within the land of Egypt. But I acted because of my name, so that it would not be profaned in the eyes of the nations they were living among, in whose sight I had made myself known to Israel by bringing them out of Egypt. So I brought them out of the land of Egypt and led them in the wilderness. Then I gave them my statutes and explained my ordinances to them. The person who does them will live by them. I also gave them my Sabbath to serve as a sign between me and them, so they will know that I am Yahweh who sets them apart as holy. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not follow my statutes and they rejected my ordinances. The person who does them will live by them. They also completely profaned my Sabbaths. So I considered pouring up my wrath on them in the wilderness to put an end to them. But I acted because of my name so that it would not be profaned in the eyes of the nation in whose sight I had brought them out. However, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land I had given them, the most beautiful of the lands flowing with milk and honey, because they rejected my ordinances, profaned my Sabbaths, and did not follow my statutes. For their hearts went after their idols, but I spared them from destruction and did not bring them to an end in the wilderness. Then I said to their children in the wilderness, Don't follow the statutes of your father. Defile yourselves with their idols or keep their ordinances. I am Yahweh your God. Follow my statutes. Keep my ordinances and practice them. Keep my Sabbaths holy and they will be a sign between me and you, so you may know that I am Yahweh your God. But the children rebelled against me. They did not follow my statutes or carefully keep my ordinances. The person who does them will live by them. They also profaned my Sabbath, so I considered pouring up my wrath on them and exhausting my anger against them in the wilderness. But I withheld my hand, and acted because of my name, so that it would not be profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. However, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would disperse them among the nations and scatter them among the countries. For they did not practice my ordinances, but rejected my statutes and profaned my Sabbath, and their eyes were fixed on their father's idols. I also gave them statutes that were not good, and ordinances they could not live by. When they made every firstborn pass through the fire, I defiled them through the gifts in order to devastate them so they would know that I am Yahweh. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel and tell them, This is what the Lord God says. In this way also your your fathers blasphemed me by committing treachery against me. When I brought them into the land that I swore to give them, and they saw any high hill or leafy tree, They offered their sacrifices and presented their offensive offerings there. They also sent up their pleasing aromas and poured out their drink offerings there. So I asked them, What is this high place you are going to? 
and is it called High Place to this day? Therefore say to the house of Israel, This is what the Lord God says, You are defiling yourselves the way your fathers did, and prostituting yourselves with their detestable things. When you offer your gifts, making your children pass through the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. So should I be consulted by you, house of Israel? As I live, this is a declaration of the Lord God, I will not be consulted by you. When you say, let us be like the nations, like the peoples of other countries, worshipping wood and stone, what you have in mind will never happen. As I live the declaration of the Lord God, I will rule over you with a strong hand, an outstretched arm, an outpoured wrath. I will bring you from the peoples and gather you from the countries where you were scattered with a strong arm, an outstretched arm, an outpoured wrath. I will lead you into the wilderness of the peoples and enter into judgment with you there, face to face, just as I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So I will enter into judgment with you. This is the declaration of the Lord God. I will make you pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will also purge you of those who rebel and transgress against me. I will bring them out of the land where they live as far as residence, but they will not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. As for you, house of Israel, this is what the Lord God says. Go and serve your idols, each of you. But afterwards you will surely listen to me, and you will no longer defile my holy name with your gifts and idols. For on my holy mountain, Israel's high mountain, the declaration of the Lord God, there the entire house of Israel, all of them will serve me in the land. There I will accept them, and will require your contributions and choicest gifts, all your holy offerings. When I bring you from the peoples, and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered, I will accept you as a pleasing aroma, and I will demonstrate my holiness through you in the sight of the nations. When I lead you into the land of Israel, the land I swore to give your fathers, you will know that I am Yahweh. There you will remember your ways and all your deeds that you have defied yourselves with and you will loathe yourselves for all the evil things you have done. You will know that I am Yahweh, house of Israel, when I have dealt with you because of my name, rather than according to your evil ways and corrupt acts. This is a declaration of the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, face the south and preach against it. Prophesy against the forest land in the Negev, and say to the forest there, Hear the words of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. I am about to ignite a fire in you and it will devour every green tree and every dry tree in you. The blazing flame will not be extinguished and every face from the south to the north will be scorched by it. Then all the people will see that I, Yahweh, have kindled it. It will not be extinguished. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, they are saying to me, isn't he just posing riddles? John 11 No man was sick. Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary is the one who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, and it was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sisters sent a message to him, Lord, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness will not end in death, but is for the glory of God, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place he was. Then after that he said to his disciples, Let's go to Judea again. Rabbi, the disciples told him, Just now the Jews tried to stone you, and you're going there again? Aren't there twelve hours in a day, Jesus answered. If anyone walks during the day, he doesn't stumble, because he sees the light of this world. If anyone walks during the night, he does stumble, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am on my way to wake him up. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will get well. Jesus, however, was talking about his death, but they thought he was talking about natural sleep, so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. I am glad for you that I wasn't there so that you might believe, but let's go to him. Then Thomas, called twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go, so we may die with him. 
When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe because you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. Having said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. As soon as she heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw that Mary got up and quickly went out. So they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to cry there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was angry in his spirit and deeply moved. Where have you put him? he asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, couldn't he who opened the blind man's eyes also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, angry in himself again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, he's already decaying. It's been four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, bound hand and foot, with linen strips, and with his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him, and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he did believed in him, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do since this man does many signs? If we let him continue in this way, everyone will believe in him. Then the Romans will come and remove our place and our nation. One of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You are not considering that it is to your advantage that one man should die for the people, rather than the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but also to unite the scattered children of God. So from that day on they plotted to kill him. Therefore Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but departed from there to the countryside near the wilderness, to a town called Ephraim, and he stayed there with the disciples. The Jewish Passover was near, and many went up to Jerusalem from the mountain to purify themselves before the Passover. They were looking for Jesus and asking one another as they stood in the temple complex, What do you think? He won't come to the festival, will he? The chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it so they could arrest him. Psalm 82 A Psalm of Asaph God has taken his place in the divine assembly. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked seller? Provide justice for the needy and the fatherless. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and the needy. Save them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know or understand. They wander in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High, 
However, you will die like men and fall like any other ruler. Rise up, God. Judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. And we're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us some time to think about those bits of scripture that may have just caught our attention. And after the music, we'll say our prayers for the day. Let's pray, shall we? Father, in the beginning there was nothing, and out of nothing you fashioned a universe so vast, so unimaginable, that we can only sigh with amazement when we stare upwards on a starlit night. And within this universe you positioned the earth and populated it, provided for it, and designed it to be a place of beauty. Creator God, thank you. In the beginning there was just potential, the seed within the packet, soil's nutrients, sunshine's warmth, rain clouds gathering. And within the tiny seed, all that is our daily bread encoded, primed and ready, should it be planted and allowed to grow. Creator God, thank you. In the beginning there was humankind placed within your garden, made steward, gardener and caretaker of this place of beauty given responsibility and the capacity to enjoy. Yet among the seeds we have sown have been weeds and crops of our own choosing, which have not shown fruit or have spread and choked the earth. Creator God, forgive us. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.